Order members, would members resume their seat? The next item in the order paper is a motion to affirm a statutory rule. Clerk, please read the motion. <clears throat> that the rates exemption for automatic telling machines in rural areas order Northern Ireland 2020 be affirmed. And I call the Minister of Finance to formally move the motion. Moved. Last can call it. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate. I now call the Minister of Finance to open the debate on the motion. Minister. Uh, today's order serves to re-implement the Rural ATM rates exemption scheme, which lapsed in 2017 in the absence of a functioning assembly. Prior to that, the scheme was a long-standing feature of the rates system, with the policy objective of encouraging and sustaining the provision of ATMs in rural areas. I believe that the policy objectives behind the scheme remain worthy, particularly in the economic climate that we now face. Previous research and analysis, along with consultation with key stakeholders, have confirmed the value of the scheme. Today's order, which follows the executive agreement to extend the scheme within the 2020-21 budget, will aid continued provision of ATMs in rural areas. The relief will be provided for the full rating year. The legislation before the Assembly continues the operation of the scheme through until the end of March 2021. The scheme provides an exemption for standalone ATMs that are individually valued in the valuation list, for example, those located outside petrol stations or on main streets. It does not apply to those ATMs located in banks or building societies, which tend to be valued as part of that property. As things stand today, there are now 84 ATMs eligible for the exemption. Although a modest, figure, a modest measure given that scale, I think the potential for the scheme to assist in the retention of eligible ATMs is a goal worth securing now that the Assembly has returned. The current financial cost of the scheme is less than £200,000 in terms of rates revenue foregone, and in the context of the magnitude of support provided elsewhere from the Executive at the present time, I consider this to be an affordable sum, given the wider benefits that it can bring. Although the support is unlikely to incentivise many new ATM machines, especially as we, as a society, transition towards contactless payments, a trend likely to be accelerated as a result of the pandemic, there remains a risk that the prospect of a permit removal of this measure could jeopardise the viability of some ATMs in rural areas. That would reduce the availability of cash in those rural communities which they serve. On this basis alone, the Executive considers that the exemption for ATMs in rural areas should be reinstated for the 2020-21 budget period. Turning to the statutory rule itself, Article 1 of the Order sets out the citation, commencement and interpretation provisions. Article 2, in turn, provides for the extension of the relevant date before which the scheme must end to the 1st of April 2021. Article 3 of the Order revokes the previous end date for the scheme. I look forward to members' comments and commend this rates order to the House. I call Melissa McHugh. At last, can Carla, August Boyd, I'm so just briefly analysing Ira Foster for hanging on and Mullishan. And I'd just like to thank our Minister as well for bringing forward uh, this legislation. Um, and it's legislation that uh, is so important to the rural communities. Um, uh, and I think that was in 2007 that it was first introduced. And at that time, it was identified that people who would have accessed cash through the local AT ATMs, the 60% of it was actually spent uh, locally as well. Uh, and at that time, it was to facilitate what I would now describe as the more rural, rural communities. In fact, the likes of the petrol station was in a very isolated area, or even the local grocery shop, an isolated area. But it's taken on a very, very different dimension since then. Uh, in 2013, I actually uh, had participated uh, in support uh, of the people of Newton Stewart whenever they were faced with the closure of the last bank in that town. And little did I think that uh, five years later, that in my own town of Castle Derg, that the three local banks would all close. Uh, and when banking had abandoned uh, the rural towns, um, it had such an impact in our communities in every respect that uh, the facility even to sort of acquire cash uh, as one would have needed had um, uh, in many ways completely gone. Uh, and if anything, it actually exposed rural communities in so many ways as well too that where uh, we had uh, an increase in uh, robberies and the likes of it in the more rural areas where there was an expectation that people would be keeping money at home and, 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 and the likes. 
uh, that those robberies then extended to the ATMs in themselves. And we all know uh, just the history of that over this last number of years. And it is without doubt uh, a necessity, not only in providing for the local community, but then too uh, that for the business community, that were providing that facility to their locals, uh, that they were finding themselves exposed and at risk. And it is uh, an, a welcome uh, development that, once again, that, that uh, rate relief is given to that business community, who now are the people that are providing for their own communities, since they have been abandoned by the banks. Uh, and as I say, I very much welcome uh, this proposal. Uh, by the Minister. And let's not forget that in having an ATM on your premises, that you're putting both yourself at risk and your premises at risk, uh, and that uh, rate relief in itself is something that's not just required now at the time of COVID, uh, whenever people are maybe not travelling as far, even uh, to other towns of the likes, we'll say, in order to do the shopping or whatever. But it is a requirement that will be there in the future as well, too, for the more rural of the rural communities in every respect. So, Gormila Maogas, Arisha Hai of Hainan and Rajasya. Thank you, Minister, for this uh, legislation. And I call the Chairperson of the Finance Committee, Steve Aiken. And may I apologise to the Deputy Speaker, may I apologise to the Minister, and may I apologise to the rest of the MLAs in this House for not being present. And may I also pass on apologies for my Vice Chair and other members of the Committee. And our business seems to be moving ahead smoothly today, so for that I have an apology. Uh, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, I rise as Chair of the Committee for Finance. At the present time, businesses need all the support they can get to help them survive, not least those businesses operating in rural areas. Rural businesses have many barriers to overcome at the best of times. Therefore, we should consider all options to support them and help rural businesses survive and continue to serve the customers on which they rely and also rely on those businesses. The Committee for Finance welcomes the statutory rule to reinstate the previously applied rates, rates, applied rates exemption in relation to ATMs in rural areas. The Committee considered the SL1 at its meeting on 10 June 2020 and was content with the policy proposal. The Committee formally considered the statutory rule at its meeting on 1 July 2020 and agreed, subject to the SR's report, that this rule be affirmed by the Assembly. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I call Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. And again, I just rise uh, briefly to welcome uh, this motion before the House today, and uh, very much in, in, in unison with what has been said from across the Chamber in relation to the importance of a rural ATM structure uh, across Northern Ireland. For, for many people realise, uh, as the banks have slowly but surely left many of our, our rural settlements and, and towns, that has had a devastating impact on connectivity and, and, and conversations and, and even indeed the access to cash. While we move towards a, a, more towards a cashless society, there has to be a recognition that there is an urban-rural split and how people access their funding. Uh, so I, I do welcome this. I would ask the Minister maybe for some more details in relation to, I think he said 84 that will be applicable to this. Will that be a published list? Okay, will we be able to get access to that? Uh, in relation also, we have to put on record, and I know this comes across from both my constituency and my uh, colleague William Irwin, we, we have dealt with numerous rural ATM bank the or thefts uh, for, from rural shops in rural localities. There is a considerable risk to having these ATMs on premises. Uh, business owners getting it difficult enough at present, but they're having that added uncertainty of potentially having their premises damaged or destroyed uh, in order to provide a service, a service that is, that is much needed to that rural community. So I welcome this. I, I think it's an important step forward, and it will obviously be kept under constant review. But just some clarity in relation to the list would be important for MLS to have. Thank you. I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, and I too would like to apologise uh, yourself and the Minister for being slightly delayed in arriving in the Chamber. Um, uh, this is obviously a welcome uh, statutory rule. Uh, we discussed it um, in, in the committee, and I don't think anyone, uh, any rational person would be opposed to it. Um, uh, it's particularly important. Um, first of all, it's a, a welcome reminder of the fact that um, these institutions can do positive practical things for people and communities whenever they actually, you know, whenever we actually um, are here and are doing our work. So that's, 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 that's good. And so it has to be welcomed. I think the broader context um, is twofold, really. It's about um, 
I, I guess the, 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 the post-COVID economy, well, not post-COVID yet, but we, are, we will be emerging into a post-COVID economy in which our small independent businesses, especially in rural areas, market towns, need absolutely all the help that they can get in order to be sustainable. That includes um, uh, having this relief, which will, uh, in a very basic way, make it more likely that uh, people are able to spend money because they will have cash in their pockets, particularly in small rural villages where, uh, as people have said, um, banks may have left the high street. And as we know, not everyone, particularly older people, probably particularly older people in more uh, isolated uh, rural areas, are perhaps less likely to be migrated towards um, card payment. Um, uh, the second uh, component is, of course, uh, that issue of banking, fair banking. My colleague, uh, Pat Catney, is setting up an APG on that subject, and he may talk about that in some uh, detail. But it's particularly important that we do everything we possibly can to make our economy as financially inclusive as it possibly can be. So this is a small step um, in that direction. It's really going back to where we were before these institutions collapsed. Um, we obviously do hope to see a broader package of support and, and a recovery strategy um, from the executive in the weeks ahead, but uh, for what it's worth, this small measure is certainly welcome. Thank you. I call Pat Catney. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm having a problem. Sorry about this. I want to thank the Minister as well. I also, um, just a little bit late uh, in coming in, apologise for that there. As my um, uh, colleague from South Belfast has stated, that we are across the House trying to set up in the process of an APG on fair banking. And this represents everything that's fair for a rural community, that uh, we're able to go out there and uh, have that facility in our rural uh, and in our rural country and in our market towns. Can I uh, thank the Minister for bringing forward this statement? Uh, it's a pity that in 2017 that it wasn't brought forward then with the collapse of Stormont. Uh, but I do, as I stand here now today, welcome that this has been brought in and thank the Minister for this quick move. I call Sinead Bradley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I too would like to welcome this. Um, in of itself, it's not, as the Minister says, it is not an incentive to bring uh, an ATM or cash machine to a rural area, but it certainly does help with the viability of retaining one there. Um, and, it, and the importance of having access in those rural areas, as other members have rightly pointed out, that money does go to critical uh, shops and support other industry in that local area, and that, that is of absolute importance and um, that should not be lost. But it has occurred to me, Minister, I'm not absolutely certain about how the area around an ATM is rated. Uh, is it by square footage of where the ATM sits? And if that is the case, I would ask the Minister to maybe take a flexible approach in, given the recent spate of robberies, many of these rural ATMs have required additional bollards or space around them for their protection. And I would therefore ask the Minister to maybe have a look at how it is rated and therefore how the exemption would apply and should it allow for that curtilage that would allow for the security and the retention of those ATMs in those critical areas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I now call on the Minister for Finance, Conor Murphy, to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Thank you, Lars Cancola. Uh, uh, and I thank, thank the, the members for, uh, who, who contributed to the discussion and the debate, uh, both on the order and on some wider issues. And I'll turn to some of them uh, in the course of my remarks relating to the extension of the exemption for ATMs in the designated rural areas. I believe the scheme is worth reinstating for those living in isolated rural communities and who still depend on the available ATMs. We can all appreciate the difficulties that can be encountered in these communities from any measure that could lead to a reduction in availability of ATMs, and especially at this time. The Executive wishes to continue to do all it can to support people in rural areas. The situation regarding the long-term need for the scheme may change in future years, perhaps as people become more used to contactless payments during this pandemic. But as things stand, I think it is worth preserving the measure. And by doing that, we can help ensure that those eligible ATMs are preserved in rural areas, providing greater access and support to these communities. 
Uh, and just in, in relation to some of the comments raised, I know the, and I thank the committee for their work in relation to all of this. I know people have been very broadly supportive of this and, and, and would have regretted the fact that uh, we did spend a couple of years uh, with this exemption lapsed. Uh, and, and, welcome, and I know people have welcomed the opportunity to reinstate it. Uh, I think Malaysia McHugh's point about the, the, the percentage of the money that is taken out of ATMs in rural areas being re-spent in that area, I think, is a point uh, well made. And I, I think it, it does lend itself to our ongoing efforts to support the rural economy and ensure that that uh, rural isolation uh, does not uh, lead to further deterioration in people's livelihoods in the rural areas. Uh, and I also acknowledge the robbery risk that he mentioned as well, and that has been, uh, and Sinead Bradley referred to it also, that has been a factor in relation to that. And while there will be a, a fixed area in relation to what would constitute an LTEM, uh, and this rates relief obviously applies to at the end of the year, uh, you know, LPS have always tried to be as flexible as they can uh, in relation to I ensuring uh, that, that the, the purpose of this exemption is to try and provide support to rural businesses. So that's the, that's the spirit in which it's been introduced. Uh, Jonathan Buckley asked about the list. I do have a list of the 84 in their location here, so I'll ask the department to make it available to him. Uh, and can I just say that I welcome uh, Pat Catney's initiative in relation to the all-party group in Fair Banking. Uh, I know there is an interest among uh, the parties in relation to that, and I hope uh, that that does have some success, because Fair Banking is something uh, which has ever been with us, but I think particularly in, uh, in, in, in relation to the ongoing support of businesses over the course of the pandemic, the loans issue, uh, access to loans, the issue of fair banking has, has, has risen to the fore again. So I think it's a timely uh, initiative in relation to that. So we'll ask Ancora, in closing, I would ask members to support this measure and I commend the order to the Assembly. Members, the question is that the rates Exemption for automatic telling machines in rural areas. Order NI 2020 be affirmed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. I'd ask members to take their ease just for a few moments as we change uh, staff at the table. <laughs>